First time I ran away from home, I had met a friend. We both went to this sci-fi fantasy convention called Vision Con. I had told him vaguely about what was going on at home. And he told me, you know, um, you just pack your stuff and um, you can come live with me in Arkansas. And I said, okay. I snuck out, got a ride from a stranger and went over to his place. And then within like four hours, my mom found me at his place because we had mutual friends in common. So she was starting to call the cops on him. And she took me back home and smashed my computer with a hammer, smashed my cell phone with a hammer and said, if you ever try to do that again, I'm gonna smash your fingers with a hammer. Did you ever run away? Yes, sir. When did you, and by run away, I mean from your mother? Yes, sir. When did you run away? In the spring of 2011. Did you tell Nick about that? Yes, sir. When did you tell Nick about that? I don't remember the exact time. Was it before your mother's murder? Yes. Did you ever consider running away after that? After you, after you ran away in 2011? Yes, but I knew that it would end badly. What happened when you ran away? Tell us about running away in 2011. It was in the middle of the night, and I packed a small bag of stuff, and my mother was asleep. So I left the house, and I met up with one of my friends. And where did you go? To um, first at Mercy Hospital in Springfield, and then to his house. And at some point, did your mom figure out where you were? Yes, sir. And when was that? Four hours later. What happened when your mother figured out where you were? She took me back home. She smashed my computer and my cell phone. She chained me to a bed for two weeks. It had not been Gypsy's first boyfriend. Around 2011, she had met another man online. Megan Pack describes the strange event as Gypsy tried to escape the clutches of her mother to visit her secret boyfriend in the hospital. She arrived at a neighbor's house. That was one of the first people who spoke out. And he noted that she was not in a wheelchair. She was walking just fine. She was wearing a wig. And she was asking him if she could get a ride to the hospital. She was frantic because one of her boyfriends had been beaten up and was apparently in not so good condition. Gypsy Bumble, someone who claims to be a friend of the boyfriend, says she made it to the hospital and, quote, was then brought to what was then my house. I can confide that she had an ID that stated that she was 18 at the time. It was shortly after she had gotten there that her mother showed up and caused quite a scene, threatening my friend who was suffering from multiple injuries, including a broken back, with legal action because Gypsy was a minor and that the reason she had different IDs was due to a mix-up in paperwork from Hurricane Katrina and missing records. The wig was blonde, she had no glasses, and I can assure you, she walked just fine.
there's a point at which you got put in a wheelchair mm -hmm. and you were seven years old, correct? Yes, sir. Why did she tell you you were going in the wheelchair? I did get into a motorcycle accident with my grandfather uh -huh. and it skinned my knee and she took me to the hospital and then told me that um, the doctor gave her a wheelchair and I have to be in a wheelchair now. Forever? Forever. She had me use a walker before the wheelchair and then after that motorcycle accident put in the wheelchair. Why did she tell you you had to be on a walker? She said that I had muscular dystrophy. But did you feel any different the day before you got the walker than the day you did have the walker? No, sir. You were able to run around? Pretty much, yes. And would you forget to get it and run into the kitchen? There would be times that I'd forget to grab it and then go to walk, and then my mom would catch me and be like, use your walker. I questioned Dee Dee about it, and I'm like, she can walk or not? You know, she's been in a wheelchair all her life. And, you know, the answer I got from Dee Dee was, you know, she had a disease she was diagnosed with, and it was going to progressively get worse, and eventually she was going to be bound to the wheelchair at all times. Did she tell you when you went out that you were to stay in the wheelchair? Yes, sir, she would. But you knew you could walk? Yes, sir. Did you ever say to her, Mother, I can walk. Why am I in this wheelchair? No, sir. I never asked that. When she wasn't around, did you get up and walk secretly? I did. Yes, sir. Did she ever catch you walking? She did a couple times. And what did she say or do? She got so upset with me, she would punish me so bad. Like, she started hitting me with a coat hanger and telling me all kinds of mean things. She would tell me that she wished she had an abortion when she had the chance that I ruined her life, that I have no idea how hard it is to keep up everything. He said from there, it was all of the, again, so many doctor's visits and supposed surgeries, and family members looked into this and could not find records of the doctor she was supposedly visiting. Wow. And from their point of view, he said Gypsy was fine, and she'd wait until her mother crossed a corner, and then, She'd start pushing other cousins around in the wheelchair. Uh, he said there was an instance where cousins were jumping on a trampoline. So she got out of her wheelchair and started jumping like any little kid would do. And in both cases, uh, was pushing the wheelchair around, her mother saw her and screamed at her to get back in her wheelchair. In the case of the trampoline, he said she saw her coming and she actually, Gypsy actually collapsed and crawled back to her wheelchair like she was paralyzed. 